Guys, we are back from Range Day now. It is the first day of SHOT Show here, and of course, we're at our booth that you see right here with James River Armory, and of course, us classic firearms. And you'll see all of the fun stuff that we brought with us, including, yes, went to, went entering to win the M1 Grand Model D International Harvester that you see right here, guys. Beautiful rifle with that high lux optic, two and a half power as well. So get your entries in on this guy because who doesn't want an M1 Garand, am I right? So don't miss out guys, stay tuned because we're gonna have a lot of cool stuff to take a look at here at SHOT 2020. Oh man, look at that. Century Arms, let's see if I can win something fun. Let's go. I always need another shirt. I have 50 people. All right, guys, we're hanging out at Century Arms. We ran into the one, the only Robski while we were over here. And it uh, looks like he's holding something pretty cool here. So, Robski, first off, great meeting you, man. And uh, That's on my side. Please. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you've got something pretty cool here. What is it? Well, this definitely caught my eye. I, uh, this is what the Century just put out on the display. This is the, uh, I wouldn't say the, the 74 clone, yeah. but it is a 74 style rifle. And they working on it. This is the uh, one of the prototypes. As you can see, it will be, I have been told by them that it will have the bayonet lock yep. and it will have the cleaning rod. So obviously they learned from the feedback from the past. So that's extremely exciting. Uh, there are also so some other features, so as you can see, like RPK style throwing on at this point, that may change, I have been told. So uh, we don't know all the details yet, but at least we know that they're working on the 74 type or running on the 545 by 39, which really makes me happy because I absolutely love this caliber. I, I think it is a little bit shame that in the United States that caliber never really took off right. and the 7.62 by 39 is a king of the hill. Uh, but I'm, I'm absolutely, uh, my heart is warm right now <laughs> that this rifle in this caliber will be becoming hopefully a, a reality in the near future. Dude, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm noticing is that a US palm grip too? Yeah, they have a US yeah. palm grip on it and uh, it will have a side rail. Yeah. Uh, they told me too that this is going to have a side folding version, uh, all, all nine yards with hopefully the triangle stocks as well. So every fan of 74 style yeah. rifles should be excited. And uh, I know they are not the only ones yeah. working on it but more and better for all of us at the end of the day it's great for the hobby yeah absolutely i agree on the same talk, token it's kind of cool that they're not forgetting about the core and uh, what, what they do they will be keep importing from Kugir Romania, the rifles like PSL 54, uh, the also the Wasser 3 in the 556 by 45, which was a huge story uh, yeah. before the, 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 the beginning of the shot show and everything. So it's kind of cool that they're expanding the US production, but not forgetting, not forgetting what made them uh, strong and they will be still on board with the imports. Dude, so. That's awesome, man. Well, hey, thank you again for all that information. Pleasure to meet you, Robski. Hey, uh, guys. my side. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Century Arms, the AK-74 clone that we've got here. Sweet. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> guys, now we're over here with SDS Imports looking at their T-Sauce line of firearms, and we've got quite a few of them here. I've got Jeff with us, buddy of ours, and I think he's going to give us a little bit of information on these pistols. I see a bunch of 1911s, Jeff. I'm liking what I'm seeing. And let me go ahead and hit this right off the right out the gate. All of these pistols fall below an MSRP of $500. Everything you see on the table is MSRP of, of uh, $479 or below on this table. We've got a couple more than about $489 on the other table. We can go check out here in a little bit, too. Pretty sweet. And first off, these 1911s that we have here, guys, we'll start off with just these clones that you see right here, which has been super popular with you guys. Uh, you guys had our green A1s. And... I've seen, Jeff, reviewers, other YouTubers actually take one of these and put some of their original A1 parts on them, and they work, they function, and I think these are just super cool. So some A1 clones, guys, very nice. So you guys, I think, are already pretty familiar with these. So let's talk a little bit more about what we've got going on right here. Uh, which one would you like to begin with? I mean, we might as well start off with the very next one in line here. Uh, so this is the A1 service. Um, essentially, it's, it's what you're seeing over there with the clone 1911 A1 that we have uh, with a few upgrades, uh, one of which is going to be the profile on the, um, the safety switch here. 
It's also got a polished uh, chrome line barrel, nice. uh, the flat main spring housing, um, and flared ejection port. Um, other, you know, to do too much more to that, you're going to be appearing to this line that you're moving on to. So this is kind of a, just a, just an upgrade from if you don't want the clone, the classic look. This is about more of a basic model uh, with just a few upgrades. Gotcha, man. And what kind of materials is this going to be made out of? Uh, this is all hammer forged steel. Um, everything from the uh, the the, flight, the sorry the slide, the frame, the barrel, everything is uh, hammer forged. Uh, of course, the grips are set themselves are plastic. Um, but yeah, it's 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 all made with top quality uh, uh, materials. Dude, that's awesome, man. Liking that quite a bit. And then you say we're gonna move up the line here. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, we got 45. We're also uh, trying to make every single model a nine millimeter. Also, um, so you know, there's everybody has a, has their opinion. You know, 45 <laughs> or nine millimeter. Well, I don't want people to argue. I just want people to be happy with what we've got here to offer. So. And offering a lot of options is the best way to do that. That's really the only option. <laughs> the only option is more options. Right. And I definitely see that we have. That here so moving on up I'm starting to see we got more dovetail type sites looks like we got some ambi safety what else we got going on with these guys um, so well this first one is our carry model it's actually got a shorter barrel it's a four and a half inch barrel um, but we had the exact same thing uh, right here with a five inch barrel so if you want the full size or conceal size um, it's the same thing um, but yeah tons of upgrades on these it's got the undercut uh, which the service did not have it's got Novak style sights skeletonized hammer and trigger enhanced safety you know the elongated beaver uh, I think I already mentioned the flat mainspring. It does come with an uh, eight round magazine, so it's, it's an extended mag that sticks out a little bit further. Nice. Front and rear slide serrations, um, you know, as, as I said, the, the Novak style sights, the three dot sights are, you know, good to go. Um, yeah, same flare ejection port, ambidextrous safety switch, goes on both sides there. Uh, what else can I say about it? Other than it runs really well, um, <laughs> I've got almost a thousand rounds through my personal duty B45 at home. And right. Uh, it, it runs it runs like it should uh, all types of ammunition as well so gotcha man definitely liking that quite a bit liking the finish on this one for sure that looks real good yep, we have stainless steel options in just about all of these especially in the upgraded version so the carry and the duty uh, both have the stainless steel options as well uh, with all the same features um, also 9 millimeter and 45 caliber awesome man I know again more options hopefully that makes you guys happy out there yep. uh, but I'm also noticing we got some rails on these guys over here absolutely yes yeah. so so, you know, some people like rails and some people hate rails, so I don't care. I want to offer it to you. We want to have it here available for you. So there's the rail system on the, on the carry, and there's also the uh, the duty version. So just just more options. And, they, you know, the increase on that from the MSRP for these to, up to the uh, the rail system is, I think, maybe just a $30 difference, uh, $20, $25 difference. That's incredible, man. So pretty much what you're getting here, same guns with a rail. Absolutely. Yep. That's what we're getting. Very cool, man. Definitely liking this. And we've got a couple more on the section over there. So let's take a quick little cut, head over there, and see what we got over there. Cool, man. Here, so we've got the same guns that we had over there, but now in that awesome finish, right? Yeah, yeah. We wanted to just finish out the line here and show you that we also carry all of those in a stainless steel model as well. Um, the MSRP on these, as I mentioned before, is 489 So th these, these are the most expensive model you're going to find. Uh, carrier version with the rail, stainless steel, um, all the great features. is everything else that you see over there on the other side, too. I got to tell you, man, I'm pretty impressed when you say the most expensive we carry is still highly affordable and you're getting a high-quality product. And like I said, guys, I've shot these plenty myself, very happy with their performance, and we've also had reviewers do the same, and we are loving that. Now, we also noticed this little guy right here. What? Uh, just touch on this for me because it looks very familiar. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's, it's essentially a Beretta 84, I believe, is what they uh, had it engineered after. It's in a 380 ACP. Um, I don't know that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, 380 ACP. I just want to make sure <laughs> I was good. correct about that. Yep. Um, it's, it, it, takes, it takes the original magazines that you might find out there as well. So this is definitely something we're hoping to uh, see come over here pretty soon as well. That's awesome, man. So hopefully a coming soon on the Beretta 84 clone that you say takes original mags, right? Uh, that's what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. Jeff, thanks again for all of the helpful information, all the product information on the 1911s, the Fatia. Loving what we're seeing so far. Um, uh, so I'm actually going to turn on over right over here to Scott because I think Scott has, for some reason, some information on these guys here. First off, you have no experience with these. Is that right? 
Well, actually, I'm the engineer in the company, <laughs> so uh, I, I have a little bit of experience with these. Hey, very well, man. Well, first off, I'm very happy that we're taking a look at these because, for one, the price point on these is going to be phenomenal, and two, they're going to be exclusive to us at Classic Firearms, so be looking out for these guys. And uh, what exactly is it, Scott, that we're looking at here? Well, th this is a very high-value item. Uh, it, it is a, uh, uh, it's a leftover from a military run, uh, so it's a, a double-action hammer-fired 9mm. It, it's carrying most of the other uh, features that you find in the Zagana line. Uh, it's got slightly different styling. You see some classic Browning type styling on the front end of that gun. For sure. And uh, at being a, a, a military contracted gun, it, there was some pretty high standards on fire control and the barrel for this gun. It's a real high value item. Man, I'm, I'm definitely liking that. So I'm seeing Ambi safety over here. Looking what looks like some very easy sights to pick up for sure. And again, you mentioned that Browning look too. That right there just looks like a modern baby high power to me. <laughs> well, it is. And note uh, what the, uh, the frame of that's made out of. This is not a plastic gun. That's an aluminum framed gun. Oh, man. Very nice. Definitely excited about these. And uh, this is the Kanuni. <laughs> the Kanuni, yeah. <laughs> if, if you can pronounce Turkish names, the line's a bit easier. But it is. And it's uh, part of the Zagana line. And uh, again, uh, a, uh, a very uh, classic 9mm high-powered styling on the front end of it, but uh, better fire control in the back. Loving that, guys. And again, exclusively going to be sold through Classic Firearms Military Over One Production on the Kanuni. And uh, guys, I think you're going to love the price point on these, so stay tuned. We'll check them out. Hey, Scott, thank you for all the information. Thank you much. We appreciate it. You got it. All right, guys, now we're over here with Standard Manufacturing. We've got Lou. Thanks for taking the time, man. Oh, right, is, it, is it Lou Lewis? Lou for the well -so. All right, perfect. Well, hey, you are holding what I think to be a pretty cool revolver there, and I think I misspoke in our product video about it, so how about you correct me? <laughs> okay, well, there's a lot of talk on the chat rooms and all these things about uh, why this is not an automatic pistol and and so forth, and I'm going to set the record straight right here, right now, with my friends at Classic Firearms. Uh, the ATF rule is uh, if you fire uh, more than one projectile, in this case a bullet, out of a cartridge, if you fire one projectile from uh, one trigger pull, that's the definition of a gun. If you pull the trigger one time and more than one bullet is fired, then that's the definition of a machine gun, etc. Uh, how that this applies to being not a machine gun is very simple. Uh, and also there were some misconceptions of the uh, toggle safety and the double trigger, double cantilever trigger, maybe that having something to do with it. That is all wrong. What it, the fact is, is that this is a volley fire gun. And what that basically means is with every pull of the trigger, one projectile is coming out of one chamber. So, hypothetically, if you have a Gatling gun and you pull the trigger and all of a sudden things are spinning, shooting out thousands of bullets willy-nilly all over the place, without question, that's a machine gun. Right. But if you had that same Gatling gun, let's just say it's got 10 barrels and 10 chambers, if you pulled the trigger one time and all of the bullets came out simultaneously out of independent chambers at the same time, that would be a volley fire system. So one pull of the trigger, multiple bullets coming out of their own dedicated chambers. If at any time you pull the trigger once and more than one bullet comes out of one chamber, then that's a machine gun. And there's exceptions to that if it's over 50 caliber, but this is obviously not over 50 caliber. But that's the misconception that I'm clearing here today of why this is not a machine gun. <laughs> Very cool. So I have yet to shoot one of these things. Can you tell me a little bit how it shoots? Well, you're missing out on a lot. Uh, Let I me know. just start with yeah. that. Yeah. Basically, this gun is uh, a gun, the ultimate gun, which I believe to be the ultimate gun personal protection. If you're a Navy SEAL, if you're a SWAT team, you train with your gun 65 hours a month, maybe this gun is not for you. But if you're everyone else, this is the gun for you, in my opinion. And this 10 square foot uh, section of this building, this is the coolest spot in Las Vegas today with this gun. I'm going to explain to you how this works very simply. Is There's one button here, three controls that you have to be concerned with. The first button obviously opens the cylinder to, get to load the ammunition like every other revolver. The second button control is the, the extractor. That's how you pull the shells out and ins install them. And the third one, quite candidly, is the trigger. Easy, easy enough. It shoots two bullets at a time. 
22 wind mag, incredible knockdown power, incredible self-defense power, two bullets hitting simultaneously uh, uh, is devastating. And there's people out there, again, there's the forum chat room guys that say, oh, you know, when you shoot the uh, 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 pellets through the air, it's just fast-moving sand, all this stuff. They've obviously never been hit with fast-moving sand, if that's the case. <laughs> But to make a long story short, this holds eight rounds of 22 wind mag. It shoots two at a time. In three seconds, you've just put down range eight rounds of devastating 22 wind mag bullets that will protect you. This is a get off me gun. This is someone's attacking you. And this is the highest level of personal protection. Starting with the beginning, what you've never really seen on a revolver before is that toggle safety. You've seen them on the black guns and so forth, but this is the first time on a revolver. And uh, so basically, you also have a double cantilever trigger. And what that basically means is you get a lot more mechanical energy pulling the trigger. This is ideal for someone who has a weak grip, maybe an elderly person, maybe someone that is doesn't not the strongest person in the world. And so that makes it very easy for smaller people or and so forth to be able to fire this gun. They have a high mechanical advantage on the double uh, on this double cantilever trigger. Also, people have mentioned that this uh, trigger guard is uh, may get snagged. As you can see, when you put this gun into your pocket, it's very obvious when you touch it with your eyes closed. Even it's very obvious what you're touching and where. And as you can see, this gun is not snagging anywhere. So this is a very snag-proof design in that regard, and it's very safe, and I'm going to touch upon that for just a minute. Uh, as you know, this is a double action system. Imagine a bow and arrow, when you pull that string back on the bow and arrow, this is what this gun is doing. This is not a firing pin that's, that's got a big spring behind it, ready to go to pull the trigger, and you've got, uh, in the case of a semi-automatic, you have a, 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 a round in the chamber. This gun, in order for it to work, you have to pull and again, imagine a bow and arrow. You have to pull that string all the way back. Pull all the way back to cock those hammers. And then on top of that, what happens is a transfer bar, there's a bar that blocks the firing pins from the hammer that has to pull out of the way. And even in, more important than that is, as you can see, the cylinder has to index into battery for the next two rounds. So between a block between the firing pins and the hammers, and the cylinder has to rotate into battery, and also the fact that you have to, it's a double action system where you have to pull that string back all the way and the toggle safety. This is the most safe and reliable gun imaginable. And the reliability touches upon the fact that it's a double, there's actually two guns in one. There's two hammers, there's two firing pins, there's two barrels. If people say, oh, uh, rimfire ammunition is not the most reliable, if you have eight rounds of bad ammo, you've got a whole different kind of problem in your life. But this gun here will, is, we've tried it with every ammunition available, and this gun is close to 100% reliable as we can imagine. Even if it were not, and the ammo is bad or something to that effect, you have a double system in here, a double redundant system in here, and if you have a broken firing pin, a broken mainspring, something wrong, you still have the other side of the gun working all the time. This gun is $429 retail. It's the safest, most reliable gun that we can imagine. It's designed around a situation to protect yourself when you're being attacked. And they're again on the chat rooms and the forums. God bless you guys. And they say it's a gimmick and they say they haven't seen the full scope. When you go upstairs here at the SHOT Show and you see all the black guns, it's like a a uh, 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 stock car race, everyone going around in circles. I can tell you firsthand that this gun is out of the box thinking and this gun is designed to save you and to protect your life with a high level of safety and a high level of redundancy and reliability. That's awesome, Lou. And again, this is a standard manu manufacturing thunderstruck, correct? Correct. Very cool, guys. So check them out at ClassicFirearms.com. Again, thank you for taking the time with us. Thunderstruck, guys. 22 Win Mag, eight rounds of awesome revolver that we've got right here. I, I can't say enough about it other than I need to go shoot one. <laughs> All right. Let's go for the grip. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Don't go for the grip. Don't go for the grip. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. This might be it. No! <laughs> Not today, guys. Now we're over here with Sylvan of Sylvan Arms. How cool is that? And I've been looking around the booth, man, and I gotta tell you, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing uh, from these 
Glock slides that you see right there with the charging handle as well. Pretty cool. I'm liking the suppressor as well. Very lightweight. Excellent product from what I'm seeing so far, far guys. But what I've been really impressed with is what Sylvan has in his hands here, and that's that folding adapter that you see right there. So I get that it's for ARs, folding buffer, folding stock, makes it a little bit more concealable package. What more can you tell me about this thing, man? Uh, yeah, hi, thank you. Actually, this is our third gen folding stock adapter. Uh, we made many improvements over gen two. Uh, one of the things we did here was we took some material off the top, some material off the top here, you can see, for more clearance for the um, charging handle. That was one of our requests, so you guys spoke and we listened. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, another thing, we took some material off here just to shed a little bit of weight. So this one is only six ounces. It's 100% uh, billet, 7075 aluminum. And basically you just press the button to open it up. Perfect. Well, that looks pretty good to me, man. I'm liking that quite a bit. So you said it was improved over the Gen 2. You've got that flat surface area now right there, so that charging handle has a little bit better clearance. Um, and I think I was talking to one of you guys, too. It looks like you guys moved the hinge down a little bit as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that's another thing we did. We moved this down just to make more clearance on the left side here uh, for the charging handle so you don't, you know, rake your fingernails on it or your fingers when you're pulling it back. Right. You know, the weight is about six ounces for everything. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit lighter than the competitive units on the market, which are mostly steel. Uh, you know, it's also easier to put on than uh, some of the competitive units. Oh, really? This one, you know, it only takes a few minutes. You don't have to disassemble it, take it yeah. apart. So, you know, that's another plus. But yeah, man, that's pretty cool. And now I think the most attractive thing about this here is the price point. Uh, right around, what is the cost for one of these? Uh, the retail on these are 179 yeah, you can't beat that. I know a lot of competitors out there. I'm sure they make a quality product, but I think you can find just a quality product, if not better even, uh, for a much more affordable price. So nicely done here. And I got to tell you, I've been uh, sitting here practicing, or practicing, right, playing with this guy, trying to see if I can make any type of bends or wobbles here at the hinge. And uh, I think you got a pretty well-built product here because I haven't gotten any budge there whatsoever. So nicely done. Thank you. I appreciate that. We worked hard on it. Thanks. Absolutely, guys. So check out Sylvan Arms. They've also got some pretty other cool products, too, like their AR Magwell adapter that will then allow you to accept Glock mags. Got that set up behind us here. Pretty cool stuff, guys. So again, check out Sylvan Arms. And as always, Sylvan, we appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Guys, we are now hanging out over here at HK, and we've got the long-anticipated SP5 with John here. Thanks for taking the time, John. Oh, it's my pleasure. Dude, all right. So why did HK bring this back into the commercial market? Why, like, why are you guys being so nice to us? <laughs> <laughs> because we love you. So, you know, you haven't been able to get an MP5 style HK firearm for about 30 years, not since the HK94. Yep. There's been a lot of demand for it, but it's not been available to be imported back into the country for, for a number of reasons. Right. Uh, and they've gotten around that by now by offering it into pistol form. So it ships into the country as a pistol with the intent that most people are probably going to SBR it put a stock on it and shoot it like this. However, it readily accepts braces. If you want to keep it as a pistol, that's perfectly fine. Um, the neat thing about this gun is that it is a current MP5. It's made on the same assembly line by the same workers using the same parts as the current MP5. So you get all the nice upgrades that you may not find in a clone. So you get the ambidextrous extended safety lever, the paddle magazine release. You get the tri lug barrel. It's also threaded for 1 in 28, so if you want to direct thread a can or some kind of a flash hider on there. Uh, and everything's in spec. You're not going to have any problems with the gun. Everything's going to work. So you get all the HK roller lock goodness that you haven't been able to get in a very long time uh, directly from HK. That is phenomenal. And what is the MSRP on the SP5? That's whatever. $27.99. $27.99. All right. Yeah. That ships with uh, two German 30 round magazines, a nice nylon carrying case, a side adjustment tool, and some, you know, your typical goodies that you get with a new gun. Absolutely. That is awesome. So, yes, guys, it's back. Hopefully, we'll have some in the warehouse soon. I know we've got one, but I think we're going to do something special <laughs> with that one. So, keep your eyes open for that, guys. John, thanks for taking the time. My pleasure. Absolutely. And if you don't mind, I'm going to play with this some. Have at it. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> Come on, HK, you listen to your people because you love us for the SP5. Make an SP7. You can do it. I know you can. 
All right, guys, now we're hanging out over here at B&T. You might know won the Army contract for the SMG with their AP-9, and that thing is sweet. But we'll talk about a little bit of that here in just a moment. But we've got Peter. Peter, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're going to go over just a couple of neat products that we see here, guys. And Peter, let's start off with uh, these guys right here. So what you're looking at right here is the USW chassis. These are essentially drop-in frames for Block 17s, 19s, SIG 320s, and the Army's new M17 and M18. So no modifications have been done to these pistols. They are just stock. As you can see, it says Sig Sauer M17. So essentially, the idea here is that you take an average pistol shooter who can't shoot very well, and you take a simple device like this, and all of a sudden, now you can engage a target effectively out to 100 meters. Wow. I'm not a great pistol shooter. I can hit 8 inch steel with this thing at 100 meters. That's pretty impressive. Definitely liking that. And the idea is that it's all in a very small package, and it's not a huge signature increase. So in terms of size, it's not that much bigger than the standard M17. Uh, all you do is field strip it, drop the trigger in, and you're off to the races. The biggest innovation is that these are not weapons. These are accessories. The serialized part of this is the trigger. In a Glock, the serialized part of the weapon is the receiver itself. So that's the difference between this guy and this guy, is that we had to retain the receiver itself in the Glock. So the USW is an aluminum chassis that fits around the whole pistol itself. So the entire pistol drops into this frame and then operates like that. So this that's is, pretty cool. This has not been modified. This is an off-the-shelf block. Wow. The other major difference is that here, if you were to mount a reflex sight, the reflex sight is going to move. Here, the reflex sight is going to be static. That's pretty cool. Some that's guys nice. like shooting this better. I personally think this is a nicer platform to shoot. I like the static reflex sight. It is larger though, so from a signature perspective, you can see that it is a much bigger platform. Once again though, for federal agencies that are Glock agencies, this is a total force multiplier because most guys don't get out to the range to shoot that much. There's no way they're going to engage a target at 75 or 100 meters. With this, if you're an agent that's getting in and out of the car rapidly, now all of a sudden, you can rapidly deploy effectively a, a nine millimeter platform that's going to engage a target out there. So, huge innovation. Yeah, that is very impressive. Liking that quite a bit. And as we move over here, I'm seeing some receivers and some cool, cool looking things over here. Right, so what you're seeing here is the APC9 series. It is a platform, nine millimeter platform, also available in 40 and 45. These guys right here are all nine millimeter. This guy up front is the new subcompact weapon for the Army, the APC-9K. Commercially available, obviously not in machine gun form, but uh, in the K version. Uh, this is regular size, so four and a half inch barrel, six inch barrel, and an SD, integ integrally suppressed. Um, this guy is probably the most fun to shoot for all you shooters out there. It's going to take a supersonic round and turn it subsonic. Oh, wow. So it is quiet. And if you're shooting subsonic, it is fantastic to shoot. It is, these are essentially 21st century MP5s. Think of them as Lego pieces. So all the stocks that you see are completely interchangeable. Um, the Pro version, which is the newest innovation for the APC-9 series, brings forward more of the AR-style controls that a lot of the federal government likes. So the older APC-9s had a different control system. These are fully ambidextrous, uh, including the charging handles. There used to be a static charging handle. Now they fold nicely out of the way. So this guy in particular, this is the Army gun. Uh, it, this one happens to have a micro suppressor on it. So this whole package is under 15 inches. Very compact, easy to deploy, rugged, and it shoots 
like a top. It's awesome. That that is pretty sweet. Now I see right here too. You've got a, looks like some uh, additional pieces, right. some so lowers you got here. Most folks know who are familiar with BNT. BNT has a proprietary mag. So what we did was we innovated and we said, well, for agencies out there who are already deploying either a SIG or a Glock chassis, wouldn't it be nice if your pistol mags also worked in your subgun and you didn't have two different types of mags? So if one gun goes down, you don't carry paperweights. Right. So with no modification to these chassis, all of them now come with all the proper cuts in the receivers and the bolts so that this will work, which is a SIG 320 mag. Wow which is also the same mag as the M17. So for the military application, soon to be coming to the U.S. Army, is this guy. So pop the pins out, which are retained. That, that's always nice because I'm good at losing things like that. <laughs> Very nice. Um, pop them out, slap it in, you're off to the races. No modification to the gun whatsoever. Wow. Now, if you're a Glock agency, Glock lower. Okay. Pop it in, ready to go. That is very impressive. So for any agency, whether it's LE, federal, military, you know, they, they invest a lot of money in these platforms, and once they go into them, it takes a lot of money to change. So our concept was, look, we're not SIG, we're not HK, we're not Glock, we're not going to change the pistol industry. They already have what they have, so we want to add something and be able to basically amplify what they've already bought. And the cool thing about this system is, the Army, you know, they go in with one system. If they don't like something about it, they're not stuck with it. They can change it. And if for some reason some agency were to go into an APC-9 or a 40 or a 45, and they said, yeah, you know what, we're going from SIG to Glock, buy a new lower. Instead of having to replace the whole system. Yep, yep. Very cool, man. Loving what we're seeing here. And of course, all of this is available to the commercial, not in Select Fire. Uh, but yeah, all but. Commercially available. You can SBR them. These would be considered short build rifles. Once again, you can SBR them, but commercially available. That is awesome. Peter, thanks for taking the yeah, time. Absolutely. Appreciate it, guys. So check out BNT, guys. I think they got some pretty awesome stuff. At least the United States Army thinks they got some pretty good stuff, that's for sure. Oh, it's yeah. really hard right now, man. Yeah. All right. If I start shaking it, what? Let me see. I need to find. This is it. Oh. Oh. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> I really thought I was gonna let it go. Yeah. Victory. <laughs>